Like most of our provinces, the Eastern Cape is showing the signs of unresponsive governance, poor planning, corruption and economic hardship. Many of its towns and cities have fallen into disrepair. In landmark areas like Ekomani or Ekuwa, water shortages can last weeks, sometimes months on end, with very few answers or accountability from those in office. East London, home to beautiful beaches and a rich cultural and sports heritage, is also in decline. It's why the Buffalo City Metropolitan Municipality set up a development agency tasked with implementing infrastructure upgrades and other projects. The agency has focused on a handful of key locations, some of significant historical importance, but ask many locals and the Metro's opposition parties, and they'll tell a story of non-delivery, missed opportunity, and money wasted. Govan headed home to tell the story. Steve Biko, a leader of South Africa's Black Consciousness Movement, was arrested and later died in police detention. The year is 1977. The date is the 25th of September. The funeral of anti-apartheid activist Steve Biko is taking place. It's a seminal moment in South Africa's history. Murdered by apartheid security police officers, Biko becomes a symbol of the struggle. Thousands attend his funeral at the Victoria Grounds in King Williamstown. You would think a place of such historical significance would be cherished. You would be wrong. Tell me, when did the stripping of this place start? Yeah, it started a long time. By the 2018s, and uh, as I am saying to you, the ground floor was already being stripped. Everything, uh, the copper cubings were not there, the uh, showers and the, and the washing basin were not there. Only what we has left was the top uh, side of the, of the of, of this pavilion. When was the last part of the stripping done here? Last month. Tembani Tom is fighting for the restoration of these grounds. Stripped and looted in broad daylight, the Victoria grounds are a shell of what they once were. Why this roof was taken down during the daylight? and then not even a single person is arrested. Gondle, formerly King Williamstown, is where I grew up. Victoria Grounds was where I often played rugby as a teenager. Coming back here, I can't believe what I'm seeing. I've always wanted to do a homecoming episode on carte blanche. Just didn't imagine that this would be it. Unfortunately, my hometown is being systematically destroyed, and there's no better example than the Victoria Grounds. Walking through what's left of the structures on Victoria Grounds unlocks so many memories for me. These change rooms I used to visit when I was a kid. There is nothing left. Every last pipe has been stolen. It's become a dangerous place inhabited by Nyaupe addicts. Locals call them Amapara. People can be raped here. People can be mugged here. Yeah. And the government is just keeping quiet. You know, people say I'm critical. Sure, Chief. There you Do go. you stay here, bro? Um, I'm washing the cars. Yeah. You sleep here? You sleep here. Shut up. Hey. Is this place dangerous, man? It's not for me. Not for you? Yeah. But for but other people? But it's dangerous for other people. Yeah, it's, the, it's too much dangerous because I'm um, connected with the Parapara. I'm shocked when you see, I see you here. Yeah. Why? Even that camera you can use it. Yeah. They're going to take. <laughs> Let me go. OK. Hey. <laughs> that is from the horse's mouth. This is a microcosm, an affliction happening across the Buffalo City Metropolitan Municipality. The charred remains of the post office in King Williamstown, testament to the dilapidation of the area. Not even the city of East London has been spared. Abandoned buildings have become havens for criminals. 
The deterioration of East London is visible on every street corner. It's not the place I remember from my student days. I used to walk this route 10 years ago freely. Now, it feels like I'm in the Joburg CBD. It's not safe and the city seems to be rotting away. So where is the municipality in all of this? Like Gorne, East London falls under the ANC-run Buffalo City Metropolitan Municipality. Almost a decade ago, the municipality established a development agency with only one job, turning the area around. That entity, the Buffalo City Metropolitan Development Agency, or BCMDA, it gets money from the municipality to boost economic development, tourism and investment. This beachfront upgrade in East London was unveiled at the end of last year. It cost more than 100 million rand. It's been dubbed the stoop by some locals and it's not hard to see why. Opposition councillors say what was delivered was not what was promised to the council. This is a stoop, my man. It, there's nothing else. It's a stoop. The only thing that is missing here is just a red paint or a black paint. Opposition parties are angry. EFF councillor Mzianda Sekiso accused the BCMDA of wasting taxpayers' money. It went up and up and up and up until it costed us close to 100 million. The development agency is also in charge of the Water World upgrade, a place where what was imagined, children's laughter and joy, is now just a faded memory. The overspend here is also eye-watering, currently 14 million rand for a project that's far from complete. DA councillor Sue Bentley says costs for the water world upgrade will probably escalate too. Now they're saying we don't have more money, but they're wanting private investors for another 45.6 million. So eventually at this stage, it's looking like 170 million. But with the vandalism and theft that's happening there, it's going to escalate. But surely they're not allowed to get away with doing that all the time. Why are they not allowed to? Because um, the ANC is in the majority here and things just go through. And it's very difficult to hold them to account. That's why things happen the way they do happen. On the BCMDA, opposition councillors speak with one voice. There is no accountability. Every month they are changing uh, leaders or the board of, the, of BCMDA. We wanted answers. Spokesperson Samkelo Nguenya was tasked with speaking to us on behalf of both the municipality and the BCMDA. Sam, why are you doing this interview? Why isn't the CEO Ayanda doing this interview? Well, I think they felt that um, let's have one voice, particularly in the fact that the agency reports to council. So in a way, we wouldn't want to contradict each other. But you know, you know, uh, and who really is accountable? So the BCMDA has been unstable for years. Yeah, no, yes. But accountability works when people are retained in their positions. And the BCMDA has a high turnover in leadership, doesn't it? It's something that we have been concerned about. Hence, we've appointed a CEO. Hence, we've got a stable board. I mean, no organization needs to have a revolving door. One of the things we've done in the agency is to suspend people that have not been competent enough. Is the Buffalo City Municipality happy with how the BCMDA is conducting its work and running these projects? We're comfortable. You really are comfortable? Yes. With such huge overruns? This project has changed the face of our beachfront. If you remember how it was before, that used to be a parking lot. It's a different design. How can you be proud of something that costs more and doesn't look like what you ordered? The artist's impression that we presented is not the final approved design. So they never went back to the people to tell them that actually this is what has been approved. As for the waterfront upgrade, which started five years ago, completion is clearly a long way off. Contractors walked off the site over a year ago because of payment disputes, and the site has been left to the fate of the elements ever since. 
Pallets of fresh grass were delivered in 2022, just before an oversight visit, and they were intended for landscaping the water park. It looks nothing like it, like it used to. It looks worse than it used to. That's another area where I used to go as a child. I'm telling you, it's, it's terrible. Have you seen it? The contractor said to us they were 95% almost finished. What we got and what we found there was a totally different picture. We've got a contractor who misrepresented themselves. We've got a legal issue that is taking place. We are trying to fight by all means to just make sure that this issue is resolved. If there's anyone out there who's got an issue, because this is taxpayers' money, we will be the first to make sure that those that are accountable are held to book. This is taxpayers' money, and the problem is that the taxpayers are not happy. Hence, we actually have requested this report. The fate of Victoria Grounds also lies in the hands of the BCMDA. In 2019, the municipality handed it over to the development agency to build a mixed-use facility, including a shopping mall. Several years later, BCMDA appointed a developer. Development of the mixed-use facility has since stalled. We had a meeting on the 20th of November in 2020 in Zuelita with BCMDA. We were fighting about this field. Uh, somebody in our delegation uh, referred to BCMDA as a Buffalo City destruction agents because of what they do, even everything they touch turned to a stone. Exactly what is planned for the Victoria grounds is unclear. The municipality says BCMDA is in negotiations with the developer and hopes the shopping mall can be built elsewhere. Unfortunately, when we looked at the alternative sites, the contractor felt that it's not going to add value. At the stage we're in right now, we're trying to push the process so that it can actually move faster. We really want to have a state-of-the-art facility there, and we're working towards that around the clock. With us saying, we've put plans in place. It's a pity that those plans have not materialized. It's not, it's not a pity, it's just not good enough. No, I agree Because with you. for decades you maintained the Victoria Grounds without a private partnership, and it was fine. It was the crown jewel of sports in Ekonle. That's the challenge. It actually was not fine. We are running at a cost. Hence, we felt that it would be much better in the hands of people that can be able to invest in it and ultimately we make profit of it. Nguenya insists not all of the BCMDA's projects have been failures. They've got six major projects. Um, they're not 100%, but I mean, I could give them a seven out of 10. A uh, seven out of 10? Absolutely. He denies the municipality is wasting taxpayers' money. And this is said without proof. Councillors that are in council have got access to every document, and if there's anything unto that they find, they should approach up to the level of law enforcement agencies to actually ensure that it gets to the bottom of that. I do not think that's a vision of government to take an agency, turn it to a cash cow for a political party. I think government set up the agency to ensure that it does project for the people. In the end, we did get to meet the CEO of the BCMDA. The mayor declined to be interviewed, but Ayanda Koboka agreed, only to cancel at the last minute. Hi. Ayanda, go Vin Whittles. Yeah? I'm Govin Whittles. You're from all right. Nice yeah. to meet you, Ayanda yeah. Koboka. Nice to meet yes, you. Yes, yeah. same here. Shabs, you're the CEO. Yes, I am the, the CEO. Uh, uh, why didn't you want to speak to us? You had uh, some care and he dealt with you very well, eh? Yeah, but I wanted, to, of, speak to, I wanted to speak to you. Head of communications, head of communications, some some care. The yeah, group well, head of communications has dealt with you and has given you very good answers. The man who initially fobbed us off did, however, allow us to film in his office with sweeping views of the sea. For Tebani Tom, the agency meant to bring about meaningful change has failed the people of this community. We have been deprived the facility, better facilities by the apartheid regime because of our colors. But now our own government is depriving us the facilities that we so fought for by not maintaining them and sell them for a quick profit. To me, a mall does not develop the people. 
These places hold such fond childhood memories for me. I would like to believe that there is still some hope in returning them to what they once were. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access carte blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.